Hey guys, welcome to the In the Game Room podcast. Today is Tuesday, January the 2nd, and uh, we are sitting out in the game room, well actually in my workshop. This box here arrived about 9 o'clock tonight, so my postal worker is having a late night, but I wanted to get this open and show you guys what's in here, because this is pretty exciting to me little order from Rubicon Games, uh, Rubicon Models, Rubicon Games. Before I pull these out, I need to tell you that everything in here is brand new. We don't even have these in the store yet. These will be available to resellers like us um, probably in about another week, maybe two weeks. Um, I ordered these uh, for myself, paid retail for them, and because uh, I was just uh, so anxious to see them. I was willing to do that and not wait until we got them into our own store. So here we have 156 scale T55 and T55A main battle tank. Very cool. There's a squeaky chair. The M102 105 millimeter light howitzer. There's going to be a theme here. U.S. Army, Vietnam era, and this I've really been waiting for for a long time, the Bell UH-1 Huey in 156 scale. So all of these are uh, part of their Vietnam series that they're doing. There's quite a few other kits as well. I didn't order everything. I'm going to wait until we get them in the store and then I'll, uh, I'll get the rest of the kits. But I wanted to get a few to start with and just look at. Um, like I said, they're all Vietnam era. Um, one of the things I like about these kits is that um, quite a few of them go well beyond Vietnam. Like These were used well beyond Vietnam. They may even be still used today. I'm not sure. I'm not an expert on what uh, light artillery the U.S. Army is using right now. But they might be using that still somewhere. These guys, T-55s uh, and the T-54s, they also did a T-54 also, but I just picked this one. Um, these are still in use today in a lot of places, so that's kind of cool. Hueys, of course, they're still in use all over the world. Um, these U.S. Army dudes, they're wearing the, uh, the green uh, BDU uniform. Well... When I was in the Army, it was called the BDU, and it was camouflage, and it was the, the woodland camouflage. I'm pretty sure that these uniforms, uh, you know, sort of structurally are the same. They, they were just plain green. So I might be able to use these for sort of early Cold War also. And as a matter of fact, when I was in the Army in 1983, um, we were just getting the camouflage uniforms, and there were still quite a few people walking around in the, in the green stuff. So, uh, so definitely these these will work for the 80s, and they've got M16s and Law rockets and M60s and things like that. So they're going to work perfectly. So, um, as I said, these will be in the store um, probably in about a week, maybe two. I'm not sure. The way Rubicon uh, does it with their uh, U.S. store is they'll send out a small batch of of new product via air freight, so that they can get them you know, into, into their warehouse and sell them to their retail customers. Meanwhile, they'll have a container, uh, you know, an ocean-going container or two coming full of this stuff for, uh, for all the resellers like us. So that's on its way. I believe it may have even arrived in port. So as soon as it gets cleared through customs and gets, you know, to, uh, to Rubicon, uh, we'll be able to get uh, all that stuff. There's the this is the one I want to see first. I just want to get an idea on the size, how much bigger this tank is to what I'm used to seeing, you know, with the World War II tanks. Okay. That's probably, I would say that's probably comparable to a Tiger in size, uh, you know, from World War II. So there's one, two, just three sprues. Looks like the tracks are very nicely done. All the individual road wheels there. Uh, two different turrets. I'm sure that uh, has something to do with the uh, T55 and T55A 
uh, variants. Uh, looks like there's two different guns as well. So it looks good. Um, I'm going to take this apart and uh, really look at every single part. But for right now, I just want to open it up and, and just kind of get a feel for what it looks like. But this is the dude I really want to see right here. I've seen some pictures online of the guys building these already. And it looks really, really nice. And that is a box full of plastic. Full color instructions. Awesome looking decals. Wow, those are really, really nice. Those are good looking decals. Okay, so the instruction book is uh, it's a book. There's a lot to it. All kinds of different versions you can do. And I believe they've got some really cool like M60 door gunners and things. They even have a... Uh, What's the uh, the rotary gun? I can't remember the name now. Uh, M1 for, uh, M134. So, let's see. And these are mostly dudes. Dudes and guns. They've got all the stretchers for the uh, uh, medevac version. Okay, so here comes some of the parts. There's the the bottom of the main body, there's the nose, the iconic nose, there's the top, there's the skids, the rotor head looks fairly well detailed, interior with a nice uh, grid on the floor there, okay there goes the tail boom and some of the rear fuselage area, uh, let's see the blades look very well done. Very nice, nice detail on the blades. Doors are all good. And actual clear plastic window clips. 105 howitzer. I don't expect this to be terribly exciting. Um, it's just a little howitzer. But again, full color instruction sheet, instruction booklet. So it looks like it's got a four man crew at least. Um, Anything here noteworthy? That's what it's going to look like all together with the four crew member. I'm sure it can be done in the in the towing configuration as well. As a matter of fact, I believe that's what uh, these two options here are: whether it's in tow or in uh, or deployed. Okay. Oh, there's the there's the base. There's the cannon itself there, side rails, okay, looks good. I mean, it's a, it's a howitzer, it's, it's, how excited can you get about a howitzer, but it uh, looks good. Oh, we have a little uh, amendment to the instructions, there must have been an error, and actually that step we were just talking about. So, there's the tow mode and there's the deployed mode. Looks very nice. My Americans, my U.S. Army Americans will enjoy that. And so while we're on the subject of Americans, let's see what we got here. Pretty simple instruction sheet, got some cool color graphics on it. Um, with As with all of the Rubicon plastic uh, figures I've seen so far, they'll give you, you know, like one lower body with three different torsos, three different heads, and quite a few different arm options. So just from this one dude here, you can make, uh, what's three times... I don't know. I don't know how to figure out the combinations, but there's probably like 50 different combinations you can do there. Get over here to this guy that's kneeling down. He's got four different uh, weapon uh, options. This dude here has got three different weapon options, two different upper bodies. This guy's a rifleman. He's pretty much he is what he is. Same thing with these two guys. They pretty much are what they are. But I imagine from this uh, from this set of 
30 dudes, I bet you could make every single one of them uh, unique in some way. And that's the way all of the Rubicon figures have been that I've seen so far. Okay, so there's their bases. Okay, these are different. Um, these aren't those dimpled bases that they sell separately. I like these. These look good. And then there's, let me see here. One, two, three, four. Okay, so five identical sprues. So there must be uh, six dudes on each one. A lot of different backpack options. See a lot of law rockets here. What else is interesting? Okay, M16s, 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 lots of those. Firing laws, firing M16s. There's a 40mm uh, uh, grenade launcher, the single shot M2... I'm going to get it wrong, but I want to say M247, I'm not sure. Um, another one of those uh, grenade launchers. There's an M16 with an M203 grenade launcher underneath it. Uh, again, a lot of different body options. A lot of different small accessories, you know, uh, ammo pouches, canteens, things like that. Looks really, really nice. Figures look good, so I'm looking forward to putting these guys together. And I'm gonna I'm gonna paint them camouflage. I want to do these as like 19. 83, 1986, somewhere in there, U.S. Army in Europe, and I think they'll be just fine for that. So, that's it for this just quick unboxing and quick look at some new things. Like I said, there's going to be a lot more than just these four items. These are just the four that I bought for myself, um, and they'll be in our store probably in about a week. And uh, I'm very excited to get into building these, so I'm going to cut this short and uh, go to my workbench and get started. Probably on this guy, or maybe a few Americans. I'm not sure. I don't know what I'm going to do. But uh, it's all good. Everything looks great. Uh, Rubicon keeps killing it. Everything they release uh, is better than the last, and they just keep improving, and they keep innovating. And this, unless I'm mistaken, this is the first commercially available aircraft kit of any type in this scale. Uh, a lot of people have been using 148 scale, which is, you know, close enough, but it's not right. And this this is actually scale, and that's really kind of cool. All right, guys, we'll let you go, and I'm going to go play with this stuff. So that's it from the game room, or somewhere very near the game room. Talk to you guys again soon, and remember, keep on gaming.